Welcome, everyone. You may be seated. Welcome to the 88th commencement exercises of the Fredonia High School. I'm Darren Paschke, the high school principal. Today is a day for celebration, a day that is steeped in remembrance, decorum, with all the pomp and circumstance, which we just played, by the way. And if, if we could have a round of applause for our fine organist, Janine Van Way. So as I was saying, uh, with all the pomp and circumstance that a great accomplishment deserves. For me, as I hope it does for each of you, this day brings an intense feeling of pride in Fredonia. This institution, this Fredonia family, has changed lives in purposeful and wonderful ways. This is the 28th time I've attended Fredonia's commencement exercises, including 32 years ago today for my own graduation from Fredonia and I still get a shiver in the core of my being right down in here when the ceremony begins. Class of 2019, this is your great day. Congratulations to each of you. However, none of us rise without the help of those around us. The class of 2019 came to graduation rehearsal and practiced standing up and sitting down as a class. They have no idea, however, that I'm going to ask them to stand right now. Will the candidates please rise? Will the candidates please turn around and face the audience? Please stay in your positions for a moment. <laughs> Parents, family members, teachers, and friends have all had a part to play in supporting you in your journey today. Many of the people who supported you are here, but some are not. But either way, I would like to join the class of 2019 in showing gratitude for the support they have received from others by giving a vigorous amount of applause to those here today. The candidates can turn back around and be seated. Thank you. Throughout school, and particularly at events such as this, we are encouraged to set lofty goals, to be the best, the best versions of ourselves, and to take the world by storm. Surely people far wiser than I will impart great truths and set your feet in a direction for success. My brief message, however, is most simple. It is easy enough that everyone can do it. That is, in love, honor one another. In the James Cameron film, Avatar, that was released in December of 2009, yes, that was half a lifetime ago for our graduates, <laughs> mankind encountered an alien race with an alien culture and an alien language. As the humans slowly integrated into their culture, they learned that instead of saying hi or how's it going, this alien race said, I see you. From the day I saw the movie, this struck me as a most beautiful, deep, and honorable way to greet one another, especially today. It is easy for people not to feel like they are seen. Social media and the fast-paced lives we lead exacerbate this problem. I see it several mornings as I greet students at the bus or in the hallways. A question of, how's it going today, gets a half-hearted smile and a response of, you too. <laughs> really? Unfortunately, we all do this frequently. When I got dropped off at the airport last year for a flight, the driver said, have a nice flight. And I said, you too. <laughs> the problem is, we're really not seeing one another. So class of 2019, Take time to love and honor one another and know that I see you. It is now my pleasure to introduce the individuals who are on stage. Please stand when I call your name.
Mr. Dan Parker, Assistant High School Principal. Ms. Kaylin Zabraski, Valedictorian. Ms. Maggie Magnoli, Salutatorian and Student Performer. Ms. Sarah Lewis, School Counselor for Letters A through L. Mr. Stephen Romans, School Counselor for Letters M through Z. To my right in the first row, Mr. Jeffrey Sertisio, Superintendent of Schools. Mr. George Borello, our County Executive, Commencement Speaker, and member of the Class of 1985. Mr. Michael Bobsin, President of the Board of Education. Ms. Christina Gaganchatz, Vice President of the Board of Education. Mr. Brian Aldrich, Board of Education member. To my right in the second row, Mr. David Jambrone, Board of Education member. Mr. Thomas Hawk, Board of Education member. Mr. Heath Forster, Board of Education member. Mrs. Lisa Fortna, Board of Education member. To my right in the third row, Elizabeth O'Connell, student performer. Marcus Seastead, student performer. Callan Britz, student performer. Jake Davis, student performer. To my right in the fourth row, Neil Jens, student performer. Kevin Redfield, student performer. Trevor Napoli, accompanist. James Rush in the fifth row, student council president. Taylor Lemishko, student council vice president. Nathan Short, senior class president. And Caleb Reynolds, student performer. A round of applause for everyone on stage, please. And I'll give you Taylor Lemishko. Members of the board, parents, Principal Paschke, Assistant Principal Parker, honored guests, and fellow graduates. It is my pleasure welcoming you to the graduation ceremony of Fredonia High School's class of 2019. Throughout the entirety of my education, I have been a part of Fredonia Central School District, which is approximately two-thirds of my life. Over these 12 years, we have made countless memories cheering side-by-side -side at the Orange Bowl, partaking in school dances, and chanting for our spoon privileges in middle school. Some of us have had spent most I have spent almost every school day together since kindergarten, and some we may have just met this year. But the irreplaceable friendships we have made here at Fredonia is something I know my class will hold on to after graduation. The bonds built with our teachers is something I will be forever grateful for. They have taught us not only invaluable lessons in the classroom, but in real life as well. This ceremony signifies much more than simply the conclusion of our time at Fredonia. This graduation marks a true transition into our adulthood. Soon we will each walk this stage as a hillbilly one last time and start a new beginning. Thank you and I hope you all enjoy this afternoon's program. Good afternoon and welcome, Board of Education members, Superintendent Sorticio, Principal Paschke, Assistant Principal Parker, family, friends, guest speakers, and of course, my fellow classmates, the graduating class of 2019. Thank you to everyone here for joining us on such a special day to celebrate accomplishments and reward the time, effort, and hard work put in by the students here over the last 12 long years. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity to give this address to such a wonderful group of classmates and to those here to support them. From the moment I was informed that I would be giving this speech, I pondered what exactly I wanted to be in it. Between studying for APs and finals, writing papers, and enjoying my last few weeks as a senior at FHS, I reflected upon my last 12 years at this school. I searched my mind for memories of every kind. In doing so, I unearthed some of the fondest memories of my time here. The things I remembered most were not the awards and championships won, or the grades of tests, quizzes, and papers. The smallest of things, however, seemed to stick out to me. I remembered having Mrs. Clark for not one, but two years in a row in the best first and second grade class there was, and getting shirts dubbing us Clark's crew, which I still wear on occasion. 
I remembered performing a Geico commercial during the intermission of our fourth grade play and participating in ridiculously intense Jeopardy, Cahoots, and Biology basketball review games in which Nick Novelli always insisted on shooting a three-point shot despite rarely ever making one. <laughs> I remember dressing up in some very interesting matching Halloween costumes with Abby DeRusso for three consecutive years and pushing Tyler Gergel's car out of the mud in the pouring rain after senior homecoming with Allie Walton Bald, Grace Marachka, and Sid Bigelow, in our dresses, may I add. And I definitely remember my wrestling coach calling for a dance break during one of our practices this year. And let me tell you, you truly have not lived until you've seen a gym full of wrestlers dancing to Hey Ya by Outkast. <laughs> Most importantly, however, I remember the kind, thoughtful attitudes of my friends, classmates, and teachers. I remember an entire fourth grade class helping me look for an earring that Ian Wright may or may not have accidentally knocked out of my ear. I remember Aurora Merwin complimenting my outfits and Sam Militello brightening my mornings by telling me that I looked nice even when I thought I did not. I remember Caleb Reynolds bringing me coffee to school the morning after a stressful night of working on a slideshow for class night and a procrastinated English paper. And I will always remember Mr. Bennett telling each and every student as they left the band every B-Day day to have a nice day. These memories are the moments that leave impressions of character and attitude upon others. These small moments, while seemingly insignificant, are incredibly important, as even the smallest of gestures can have the largest impacts on an individual. These are the moments that show the true kindness and compassion of others and the moments that individuals should strive to have. While the moments I have mentioned are specific to me, similar moments exist in the minds of each and every person here today. You all have made memories for others the same way others have created memories for you. Cherish these and aim to create lasting memories that positively impact those around you. To close this address, I would like to end with a quote from a short piece of writing that Mrs. Johnson slipped into our PE folders this year. In this piece, Michael Josephson, a speaker on the subject of character and ethics, talks about living a life that matters. He states that at the end, it won't matter where you came from or on what side of the tracks you lived. It won't matter whether you were beautiful or brilliant. What will matter is not what you bought, but what you built. Not what you got, but what you gave. What will matter is not your success, but your significance. What will matter is every act of integrity, compassion, courage, or sacrifice that enriched, empowered, or encouraged others to emulate your example. What will matter is not your memories, but the memories that live in those who loved you. What will matter is not how long you'll be remembered, but by whom and for what you'll be remembered. So, on the day of our commencement, a day of endings but also new beginnings, go forward in your lives aware of the small moments that others hold for you. Be mindful of who you are and what you stand for, and make sure the moments you have already made and the moments you will make are positive and uplifting ones. Finally, choose to be kind, choose to be true to yourself, and choose to live a life that matters. Thank you.
That was amazing. I can't believe I have to follow that. <laughs> it's incredible. On behalf of the entire Heary family, I would like to congratulate all the graduates of the class of 2019. This is certainly a proud day for you and your family, and we are so grateful for the opportunity to celebrate your accomplishments with you. Members of the class of 2019 would not have known Tom Heary, but perhaps some of your relatives still remember him. He served as the principal of Fredonia High School from 1972 to 1992. While principal, he made decisions for the school by consistently asking the question, will this be good for the kids? He led by example with integrity and humility. This year marks the 26th year of his passing. The Thomas M. Heary Memorial Scholarship Award selected by administration and faculty honors a student who has a minimum grade point average of 3.25 and will attend a four-year college, possesses strong moral character and works to his or her potential, and has demonstrated leadership and high achievement in extracurricular activities. This year's recipient excelled academically and athletically, particularly on the soccer field, was editor-in-chief of the school newspaper and has consistently worked and volunteered throughout his time. It is my sincere privilege to present the Thomas M. Heary Memorial Scholarship Award for 2019 to Gabriel Persh.
afternoon, everyone. Thank you to all of you that are here to celebrate with us for the graduation of the class of 2019. I have had the honor and the privilege of presenting Ms. Scholarships for the Fredonia Educational Assistance Fund for a number of years, and I always enjoy seeing everyone here celebrating together. So let's get to it. In 1961, little history first. In 1961, a group of community members gathered to form a constitution and bylaws for a Fredonia Central School Community Scholarship. Among the charter board members was Cecilia Beckman, and we have given an award in, in memory of her in the past. This year, we would like to honor another charter board member, Genevieve Ludeman, a retired teacher who has been, involved, been an involved community member and parent. Mrs. Ludeman has been a lifelong Chautauqua County resident and graduated from Brockton Central School, received her BS in elementary education, and her master's in elementary education from Fredonia State. She retired from teaching at Fredonia Central Schools in 1986 after 31 years of teaching and remembers her work with students outside the classroom to be as rewarding as her time in the classroom. Community service has been an integral part of her life. Mrs. Ludeman serves on the board of her Baptist church and on the board of the nursery school at there. She is a lifetime member of the New York State PTA and also the League of Women Voters. She is a member of the United Seniors of Fredonia and the Brockton Portland seniors. Mrs. Ludeman is here today, I believe. Is she here? I was told she was gonna be here, but I couldn't find her in the crowd. Um, on behalf of the committee, we wanna thank Mrs. Ludeman for all of her service to all of the students. And in her honor, today we are giving one of our awards dedicated to a young man who was like Mrs. Ludeman, a leader with determination to do their best to help others excel and to be a strong part of their community. So the Genevieve Ludeman Award goes to Dyress Batten. differently this year just because I always feel bad that the students out there wondering is it me that won or whatever so I wanted um, everyone to be able to hear a few things about this wonderful young man our first impressions when he came in for an interview with our committee was that he was well prepared respectful well spoken and a thoughtful person he enhanced that throughout our interview process in the relatively short span of a half an hour we learned about his academic journey from being a non-participant, as he called it, to his academic journey to learn not to quit, and he continues to develop knowledge and skills through hard work and motivation. Not unlike two of his heroes, Abraham Lincoln and Mr. Beers. No Mr. Beers either? <laughs> his teacher, I'm not doing well on the COVID. <laughs> His teachers and his principal have told us that Dyress is one of those students that you come across very rarely in your entire teaching career. He is a student with a fierce commitment to his own success. He has impeccable character and personality traits. He is a leader and a model of how to be an excellent student, person, classmate, human being. Dyress has been a key contributor to his football and track teams, participated in numerous volunteer activities, and is a member of the National Honor Society, Tri-M Honor Society, and a member of the Civil Air Patrol. Dyress will be attending Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and will be studying aeronautical science. Congratulations. We have three. Our second scholarship winner is a young lady that asked us, the interview committee, a question that stopped each of us for a few seconds. But then what followed was an interesting and lively conversation with her about why we do what we do. We always ask the students, do you have anything to ask us? And most of them are like, no, and they just want to get out of the interview. Um, we were really impressed with this young lady. Um, and even after she left us, it reignited a conversation amongst us. Um, and we kept coming back to this, to this woman. She's interesting, she's smart, she's thought provoking. And this is Carly Morton. And we would like to have her come up here.
I may get told to never do this again and make the students stand up here from next time. So Carly has pushed herself academically and achieved success in advanced placement classes while being involved in volunteer activities such as roadside cleanup, medical collection, nursing home visits, and fundraising for local charities. Carly also holds a job throughout her last two years of high school and is a key member of her indoor and outdoor track teams. She's also a member of the musical crews and the local 4-H club where she, is consistently where she consistently demonstrates leadership skills. We are very proud to award this scholarship to this wonderful young woman and she pers pursues a degree in biology at Niagara Community College. So during our interviews, we have an application and um, references, and we look at transcripts and things like that. But um, we also have an interview. So when they come in for the interview, there's three or four or five of us from the committee, and we ask all sorts of questions. And sometimes they're prepared, and sometimes they just kind of tag along on what we've already um, been talking about with the student. And then we all write notes so we can keep them all straight afterwards. Um, and then when it comes time to decide, which is the hardest part of the interview process, who do, um, can we, we give these awards to? We look at our notes and try and refresh our memories. Um, and usually the award winners stick out pretty well. And um, our third and last scholarship recipient um, was exactly that standout kind of a person. Um, we were going around saying, what did you think about this young man? And people, our notes included things like talented, serious, really talented. Goal-driven, eager, responsible, dedicated, and several more, but I tried to limit it to one page. Kalen Britz is that student, and our third scholarship goes to him. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was great meeting you. I'm standing up here too? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so Kalen is a talented sound designer having 14, yes, one four, musicals on his resume. As well as using his skills for musical, he has also used them for concerts and other activities at the high school, local veterans activities, Memorial Day ceremonies, and at his church, Harvest Chapel. His talents, though, are not just limited in the musical and sound design areas. They also reach into um, academics where he has pursued a rigorous college-level coursework extreme success in the college level courses and advanced placement classes. We are proud to support Callan as he will be studying at Sunny Fredonia to pursue a BFA in theatrical design. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Roger Pecos, and I'm the past president of the Fredonia Teachers Association. As a past president, and on behalf of all your teachers from pre-K through this year, I wanna say congratulations to Fredonia High School's class of 2019. Your family, friends, and your teachers are very proud of your accomplishment, and you should be too. You earned this day, so enjoy it. Many of you are heading off to college, but your education won't end there either. Whether your future involves a college or university, the workplace, or the military, throughout your life, educational opportunities will appear in many different forms. And I encourage each of you to seize those opportunities. For as it is stated in a Chinese proverb, learning is like rowing upstream, not to advance, is to drop back. It is again my pleasure to award the Fronia Teachers Association Scholarship, to encourage our graduates to consider a career in teaching, and to assist talented young people who plan to enter the teaching profession. The Fronia Teachers Association awards a $1,000 scholarship to an individual or individuals who have chosen to become an education major, who have a cumulative average of 3.25 or higher for high school, who have been accepted into a four-year college or university, and who have demonstrated qualities of good citizenship. I'm happy to announce that once again, we are going to award two scholarships, 
and I ask them to join me on stage while I talk about them. So, Elizabeth Bumpus and James Rush, please join me. first. In her application letter, Liz commented on her decision to pursue a career in teaching Spanish, stating, the Spanish classes have given me a deeper understanding of the importance of learning a second language and the culture it belongs to. The impact this, this has had has allowed me to view social problems from another viewpoint and to understand the issues another country would have with a solution. Liz also spoke of the importance of volunteering and giving back to the community and has participated in volunteer activities with the Interact Club and the American Legion Auxiliary. She will be attending college right here at the State University of New York at Fredonia. Our second recipient has chosen to pursue a career in special education and early childhood education. In his application letter, he spoke of his decision to become a teacher saying, I am inspired by teachers, especially my mom and dad. I have always admired how hardworking and dedicated my teachers have been. In speaking of one of his favorite teachers, Mrs. Terrell, Jimmy stated, I want to be able to make a difference in students' lives like she did. Jimmy has served on student council for four years, including this year as our student council president. He is a member of the National Honor Society, sports editor for The Spectator, and has participated in Model UN. Jimmy has been accepted into the Special Education and Early Childhood Education Program at Mercyhurst University. It is my privilege to award $1,000 for only Teachers Association scholarships to future teachers Elizabeth Bumpus and James Rush. Congratulations. <laughs> Danny, the Big Dan Heart of Gold Award. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jude Gardner. I'm here on behalf of all the people that loved Big Dan. Dan Bigelow was one of the most fun, loving, and peaceful men on earth. Dan loved everyone. He had an infectious smile and giggle. If you ever asked him for anything, you could be sure that he would be there for you. Many of you may remember seeing him in his big red dump truck or in the town of Pomfret truck. Truth is, the softball field is where his heart really was, watching his daughter Sydney Bigelow and all of her teammates compete. I know he's still looking old over all of you. Many friends of Dan have decided to put together funds to dedicate an award in his name. This is not a scholarship, but this is an award, an award about equal opportunity of someone going into the work field, college, or to a trade school to better themselves. When choosing a recipient for this award, the characteristics and qualities we look for are a warm heart, peaceful attitude, and courage to help anyone in need. I would like to congratulate this year's recipient for displaying the same characteristics and displaying a heart of gold as her father, Dan Biglow, did. This year's winner is Sydney Biglow. Congratulations. <laughs>
congratulations to the class of 2019. What a beautiful and exciting day this is for you and your families. It is an honor today to represent the family of Doug and the late Ann Manley, as well as the class of 1967. For over 30 years, the Manley family has taken this opportunity to honor their beloved son, David E. Manley, who was a member of the class of 67, by awarding a generous annual scholarship to a member of Fredonia's graduating class. As I prepared for this event, I was struck again by two things. First, the constancy of their love. David's father, his late mother, his brothers and sisters, as well as their spouses and children, have faithfully continued to honor David's short but distinguished life. Second, they have demonstrated an extraordinary long-term commitment to our community by supporting the dreams and aspirations of our young adults. They recognize that students educated in Fredonia go on to impact their communities and the world in large and small ways. It may be by coaching a softball team, teaching children, building a small business, or by grand performances on a stage through research in laboratories and hospitals or through service to others. The student chosen by the family this year shares many of David's best characteristics, and I'm sure they would have been good friends. Both scholars, outstanding musicians, devoted friends and loving family members, they are people dedicated to serving others. After high school, David went on to study at Colgate University and Harvard Business School, and then he served in the Peace Corps. This year's recipient, so full of promise and possibilities, also has a brilliant future ahead of her. It is a pleasure to present the 2019 David E. Manley Scholarship to Ms. Carolyn Cameron. On this beautiful and moving afternoon, the class of 67 would like to congratulate the class of 2019 on your many remarkable accomplishments and offer a hand to help you on to the next exciting stage. We are so very fortunate to live in a community that prepares its students to become successful in the wider world. Fredonia graduates make a difference wherever they go. Thanks to a rigorous academic preparation, outstanding teachers and administrators, a wide variety of activities that require collaboration and teamwork, and a supportive network of parents, family, and friends, any future you can imagine is possible. Fredonia alumni are leaving their marks all over the nation and the world, and you will too. Whether you go on to study in college or enter the workforce, we hope you will find a way to give back to your communities and your country. If you make service a central part of your lives, you will be enriched beyond measure. No matter where you build your lives, you will forever be connected to these people, this community, and this school, and you are always welcome to come home. Thanks to the generosity and loyalty of our classmates around the country, we have been able to present awards for the past 31 years. These are given in remembrance of over 30 beloved classmates and former teachers. We are hoping that in the next few years, another class or two will adopt this same approach, supporting the dreams of our students so that we might retire. Our class has always prioritized in our selections character, especially focusing on service, compassion, integrity, courage, good humor, and leadership. This year's multi-talented recipient possesses these traits as well as a rare set of skills. He's a scholar who not only was accepted to attend Canisius College, 
but he's also able to recite the entirety of American history, over four days of hiking to a rapt audience of eighth graders. He's a gifted vocalist and actor whose performances have not only enthralled musical audiences, but also commanded a field full of 70 teens to direct relay races, games, and lead them in trail songs. He's an incredible musician who moves easily from playing the saxophone and singing to playing his guitar, harmonica, or ukulele, or all three, while carrying a 30-pound backpack. I am very pleased and very proud to present the Class of 67 Memorial Award to an extraordinary young man, Marcus Seastead. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Just to set the record straight, um, see Mr. Jay Brown up here, if he's ever told you the story that uh, uh, we were playing away game and I beamed about uh, six batters in a row and we got ran out of the ball field and had to run for the bus. It's not true, no, don't <laughs> believe On behalf of my family, I'm honored to be congratulating the class of 2019 today, as well as announce the first Gabriel Barton Carruth scholarship recipient. My brother Bart loved baseball, starting <clears throat> his early years playing Little League over at Eagle Street Field, playing high school ball at Fredonia, playing on numerous summer teams in college, and playing uh, men's league baseball. He was a fierce competitor, giving his all, no matter what sport he was playing. He was the same when it came to his education and his career, always striving to be on top. That drive and determination led to a career in the biotech and pharmaceutical industry. He was hardworking, respected, and a passionate advocate of breakthrough drugs and therapies to treat a variety of illnesses. <clears throat> Above all, Bart loved life and his family. He will always be remembered as the go-to guy. Whether you needed somebody to talk to, or if you were in the ninth inning, bases loaded, and needed some reliever to get up there and get the last batter up. We are honored to award the first Gabriel Barton Carruth Memorial Scholarship to someone who exemplifies these qualities. This year's re recipient is Jake Davis. of the Board of Education, Superintendent Sertisio, Principal Paschke, Assistant Principal Parker, faculty, honored guests, parents, and my fellow 2019 graduates. Good afternoon and welcome. Before I begin my address, I would like to say how grateful I am to be standing here today in front of everyone. It is a surreal experience to know that I will be one of the last people to address the entirety of this class before we all go our separate ways. So for that, I thank you. A little while ago, a very important person in my life told me I shouldn't say we made it at the end of my speech. At first, I was confused because, I mean, didn't we make it? We're finally graduating from the hardest four years of our lives. After all the exams, long nights, and countless hours doing homework, more specifically math, we finally made it to this point. But the key phrase in there is this point. We've only made it this far. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that we're really just getting started. 
the more I realize that we have so much more to accomplish and look forward to in our lives than just graduating high school. Yes, graduating is a huge step towards the future, but there is so much more beyond 80-minute class periods and football games than we even realize. I, for one, want to graduate college and get a job that makes me beyond happy and that hopefully pays good money. I want to fall in love and marry the love of my life, have a family of my own, travel the world, and experience life from every corner. Now, I know that's a very basic answer, but it's also the answer that makes me the most excited for what's to come. Everyone's definition of the future might be different, but life would be boring if everyone wanted the same things. We are all going to do something drastically different with our lives, whether it be curing cancer, creating a musical, or educating the future leaders of the world. Yours just might not include that. But to some, the future can be daunting and confusing. There will be boulders, hills, and mountains we have to climb. We won't, we won't always know our purpose or whether we're on the right path. Life is hard, but no one ever said it was easy. Maybe when we were in kindergarten and all we had to worry about was what thing of 100 we wanted to bring in for the 100th day of school. But we're adults now, and it's time to look forward toward creating a future in which everyone feels like they belong. Regardless, not everything will go as planned. But isn't that the exciting and thrilling part of life? Not knowing exactly what's going to happen next? I'm sure most of us in this room can say that they've watched a movie in which every single action can be predicted down to the second, like almost every Hallmark movie that my mom and sister absolutely love. At first, they might be funny, but after a while, they become obsolete. There is nothing left to the imagination, and what's the fun in that? Even still, to the exhilarating and somewhat nerve-wracking parts, life has a way of making everything fit into place. Maybe not at the exact time you want it to happen, but there are reasons for everything. With each challenge comes learning and growth. No struggle is exactly like the other. These struggles hum humble us and allow us to better ourselves. Instead of pushing these times away, we need to learn to embrace them, because after today, we are headed full speed ahead to a chapter that will shape us into who we are for the rest of our lives. Yes, this is scary, but every graduate here is ready, whether you believe it or not. And everyone in this room and town is willing to cheer you on every step of the way. Like the pieces of a puzzle, each part plays a role in the whole image, meaning our successes would be nothing, would mean nothing, without our failures. Now, the direction you choose to take after hearing this is your choice, but no matter how you perceive it, know that life works in mysterious ways. We don't know why it does the things it does, but what we do know is that everything will come together to become one coherent piece, eventually. We all just need to have a little patience. Now, no graduation speech would be complete without the mention of the specific class especially when you're talking about us, the Fredonia High School class of 2019. I would now like to mention that I will be saying 2019 a good amount of times in the next minute, because if you know my class like I do, we love talking about how great we are. The class of 2019 is a class like no other, literally. Ask any student at Fredonia which class is the best, and they will all answer with their own. But we all know the real answer, the class of 2019, though many teachers might disagree. So good luck next year without us, the class of 2019, because the 2020s are a handful. <laughs> We've shaken things up since the summer of 2015, and we haven't stopped since. With the drive, determination, and enthusiasm that the class of 2019 has showed over the past four years, I have no doubt we will accomplish great things. From that, every good thing must come to an end for greater things to follow. But for some reason, it feels like just yesterday we were attending our freshman orientation, walking to FHS for the first time as high schoolers, meeting our new teachers, learning our locker combos, and posting our schedules online to see which friends were in our classes. At that time, the aspect of graduation seemed light years away. But as of today, June 30th, 2019, it's finally here. 1,397 days later, and we're at the end of an amazing ride filled with tremendous highs and the lowest of lows. High school, you have been one wild roller coaster, and now it's time to get off. Wherever the next chapter in your life takes you, I hope you take a minute to remember the memories, knowledge, lifelong friendships, and life lessons you've gained from this time together. Class of 2019, it's been a great one.
May your next ride be filled with laughter, excitement, success, and most of all, happiness. And in the wise words of Confucius, wherever you go, go with all your heart. Thank you.
That was amazing. Yeah. So much pride to, to have such fantastic students and teachers at our school. At this time, it is my honor to uh, introduce our commencement speaker to the class of 2019. George Borello was born and raised in Silver Creek and Fredonia. He is a 1985 graduate of Fredonia High School and a 1989 graduate of Purdue University. George has spent most of his adult life as a businessman and entrepreneur, founding Top Shelf Marketing in his early 20s. He grew the business into a successful, nationally recognized supplier to the hospitality industry. George merged his company with Progressive Specialty Glass Company and was the Vice President of Marketing for Progressive for 20 years before retiring in 2017 to pursue public service full time. He and his wife Kelly are also owners of several beachfront hospitality and tourism businesses in Sunset Bay. In 2010, he took office as Chautauqua County Legislator presenting, or representing the town of Hanover. During his eight years in office, he pursued projects to promote tourism, downsize government, and clean up blighted properties, and he was also a staunch advocate of preserving, protecting, and improving our lakes and waterways. On January 1st, 2018, George was, was sworn in as the Chautauqua County Executive, serving as CEO of Chautauqua County Government. As county executive, he is dedicated to serving the residents of Chautauqua County, and his mission is to lead by bringing people together, facilitating communication and collaboration, setting goals, and then achieving those goals. In March of 2019, George Borello became the Republican, Conservative, and Independence Party candidate for the vacant New York State Senate seat in the 57th District. George and his wife, Kelly, live in Sunset Bay in the town of Hanover and are both active in several charity and community efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, a friend to me and certainly a friend to education, County Executive George Borello. Well, I've never actually had to follow up a act quite like that when I've spoken. I've got uh, Fredonia High School's answer to the Blue Man Group that I have to follow up. So. Uh, but thank you very much for, for uh, allowing me to speak. I'm truly honored. And Darren, thank you so much for asking me to be here and speak. Um, you know, I grew up with Darren in school and uh, had a lot of fun, whether it was programming our Commodore 64s or Friday night uh, Dungeons and Dragons tournaments. But uh, I know what you're all thinking. Yes, we were the bad boys of Fredonia High School. <coughs> yeah. You know, I love growing up in Fredonia, and I owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to so many people in this community, especially my teachers at Fredonia Central School, who have helped shape me into the person that I am today. And I want to sincerely thank everyone in this community for all that they have done for me and everyone else. We have a great track record here in Fredonia, producing great leaders. Thank you very much. You know, I sat here in those seats 34 years ago as a graduate of 1985, and uh, you know, I, now I'm proud to be here with so many of my friends that are uh, graduates also uh, of Fredonia High School that are teachers and your parents, and uh, I certainly do feel old right now. So, uh, you know, when I was sitting there 34 years ago, a lot of things were, that were going through my mind are probably going through your mind. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you know, you're, you give a lot of advice from a lot of people. When I sat there, I was going away to college. And I was saying to myself, I'm going to leave here, and after college, I'm never coming back. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of you got that same advice from people that sh you should leave. Uh, but let me tell you something, that um, uh, you should, you should, there is a lot of opportunity here. And I'm here to tell you that, because I know that as county executive. I found that out firsthand. And, uh, and also say this, that my plan after college was that I was going to go to Chicago and be a stockbroker. But I was going to come home for one last summer and work one more summer at, in Sunset Bay. Well, as they say, you know, uh, the old saying goes that uh, life is what happens when you're making plans to do something else. So I actually uh, had an opportunity to stay here and, and take, a take a job. Uh, and then within a year, I had started my own business right here in Western New York. That's an opportunity that would have never happened in Chicago or anywhere else in, in the country. The opportunity for me was here. And not just for me, 
there are lots of other people that can tell that same story, many of whom are in this room. I know this because in my first 100 days as county executive, I, vis I made a pledge to visit 100 businesses in my first 100 days. And I actually got to 107 businesses throughout Chautauqua County. Most of them are small to mid-sized businesses that were started here and are still locally owned. Ladies and gentlemen, in the class of 2019, your opportunity to own your own business and live a good lifestyle will be here in Chautauqua County. You know, I traveled extensively in my career. I traveled all over uh, the country and other countries as well. I've probably been to more uh, cities and areas in, in the United States and Canada than anybody else in this room. And I can tell you a couple things that I learned. Number one, the worst drivers in America are in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> and that of all the places that I visited in over 20 years, I can tell you that none of them are as beautifully unique and diverse as our area here, especially here in Chautauqua County. You know, I left Chautauqua County for a while myself, and in, in my job, I could have chose to live anywhere. My wife and I did choose to move back here Chautauqua, to Chautauqua County because we know how beautiful it is. We used to live in Williamsville for a while, and I would open up my curtains in the morning in Williamsville, and I'd be looking at my neighbor's house. Now I open up my curtains, and I look at Lake Erie. I'd much rather look at Lake Erie. And you know, this is a great place for anyone to affordably live on or near a body of water or another beautiful place here in our area. So I encourage you all to know that this is a wonderful place to live. You know, if you're going to be staying here and going to SUNY Fredonia or JCC, I want to thank you for making that commitment to stay local. And I will tell you this, that there are many jobs here. All you need is to be able to work hard and have the skills that they need to fill those positions. So I wish you luck. For those of you that are going away, I, I, will, I know that nothing that I can say here is going to change your mind on anything in particular. But I do hope that you follow a path similar to me and that you also realize that this path could bring you back here to Chautauqua County to raise a family, to own a business, and to have a good life. So in closing, I'm going to say this. Some of you may, may have heard that um, billionaire Robert F. Smith went to uh, uh, Morehouse, Morehouse College and gave his commencement speech there. And at the end, he actually announced that he was going to pay off all the student loans for the two, class of 2019. Well, that's not going to happen here today. <laughs> However, as a token of my appreciation for being here and being, uh, so being so honored to speak here, I would like to buy dinner for each and every member of the 2019 class. So you will all be receiving a $20 gift certificate to come have dinner on my wife and I down in Sunset Bay at Cabana Sam's. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for this great honor. Congratulations, and thank you again. There is no way I'm going to follow that up. So. Uh, how are we all doing today? Here we go. So, well, classmates, I know you've been looking forward to what I'm going to say up here on the stage today for the whole year. Not in a good way, though. You guys are definitely scared. So, Anyways, welcome families, members of the Board of Education, Superintendent Mr. Sarticio, Principal Mr. Paschke, Assistant Principal Mr. Parker, teachers of my class, to the graduation of the class of 2019. It is an honor to be able to speak up here today. Before I begin saying the things I want to say, everyone give a round of applause to the graduating class of 2019. This thing is so annoying. <laughs> All right, where do I begin with my class? The accomplishments, the people, the memories, the things that my class accomplished over the years has been remarkable, and that is a testament to all the hard work and time my peers put in to all the schoolwork and extra activities and it shows. This year alone, we had the worst case of senioritis a senior class has ever had, most flexes taken away in history. <laughs> oh, and don't let me forget, this isn't really an accomplishment, but we are the only class to not get a field trip to Darien Lake in sixth grade. Yes, some people are still mad about that. <laughs> Someone in the school owes us big time. 
How about, the real, how about the real stuff now? I can stand up here and list all of our individual and class accomplishments, which are all great, and there are a lot, but I think our class accomplished something bigger and more important than all that stuff. In my eyes, no offense to anyone, the past couple years around the school have not been the best they could have been. Not that much excitement, not that much leadership, but my class took it upon ourselves as a senior class to change that. What our biggest accomplishment was, in my eyes, is that we changed the culture and set the bar high for all the classes in high school now, but also for future generations. In the papers and on the internet, you all saw how successful we were in all our sports and how great academically we all were. And we most definitely set the bar high for those things. But the most important part that we raised expectations for that gets overlooked by everything else is how to be well-rounded individuals, which we all are. We are amazing leaders and role models. We did great things behind the scenes that people don't know about that should be recognized. We all possess a great amount of character and represented ourselves and our school with immense pride every single day. And to continue on that, the reason why I will miss my class so much is the fact that we have a large amount of high quality people. Some teachers in the school might argue that, Mr. Newell being one, <laughs> but let's just put our differences aside for one day. Every person has their own uniqueness to them and is special in their own way, which really puts a definition on this class and that's why we will be remembered for a long time and also why we all have the potential to do big things in this world. In the last part of my speech, I just wanted to take the time to thank some people and give a little advice. I'd be up here all day if I had my entire list of people I want to thank, and if I did do the entire list, they'd most likely kick me off the stage. So first, I want to thank all the families and individuals that have helped me along the way. You know exactly who you are. I want to also thank my entire family, specifically my mom, my grandparents, and my dad. Without your love and support over the years, I don't think I'd be here right now, so thank you for that. I love you guys. Finally, my last thank you is to all of my peers graduating with me today. Thank you for all the tough criticism. It was bad some days. Um, are you serious right now? <laughs> no, I don't know where it went. I had it. It's just gone. I hope I'm I hope I'm being thanked for this. <laughs> all right, here we go now. So thank you for all the laughs, all the jokes, all the fun times, all the great conversations, all the support and advice, all the love, and for all the lifelong memories. As some unknown, unknown person said, you guys have probably heard this a thousand times, good times come and go, but the memories will last forever. Thank you for letting me represent our class this year, for giving me the opportunity to speak up here for one of the biggest days of our lives. And again, all my friends, my family, and peers, from class 2019, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. It has been a ride I wouldn't have wanted to do with any other class or any other people. Now it is time to officially graduate, celebrate, and take a step into the start of our new lives. Just a little advice, always remember, do the things in life that make you the happiest, follow your dreams, trust the process, believe in yourself and your abilities. What's so funny about this? <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be serious right now, so. <laughs> and always stay true to yourself. Pretty cool quote I found, supposedly by a lady named Sheila Bethel, you can't really believe the internet nowadays, so. That everyone here should live by. One of the most courageous things you can do in life is identify yourself, know who you are, what you believe, and where you want to go. Again, I thank you all. And this is for you, Mr. Romans. Mama, we made it. Good afternoon. At this time, it's my great pleasure and pl privilege to award high school diplomas to the class of 2019. Will the first row of candidates please rise? Will, will Ms. Lewis and Mr. Romans introduce the candidates?
Donovan James Apthorpe. Dante N. Ardillo. Ashley Lynn Atzrat. Cody Jordan Austin. Dyrese Tavon Batten. Taylor Bentley. Sydney Ann Bigelow. Marissa Anna Bocher. Callan Joseph Britz. Elizabeth R. Bumpus. Peter T. Kalani. Caroline Hope Cameron. Matthew John Childs. Hannah S. Christie. Ian G. Clement. Heather Rose Cole. Joelle F. Cologne. Zachary Alexander Carenti. Nicole Dizon Kosico. Mackenzie Marie Crandall. Kimberly Rachel Cruz. Angela Marie Cachia. Jake A. Davis. Casey Christine Decker. Damian S. DeJesus Skelly. Stephen Ian Diaz. <laughs> Abigail DeRusso. <laughs> Tyler Joseph Donahue. <laughs> Preston Jose Echeverria. Justin M. Edwards. Laurel E. Eric. Megan McLeod Foley. Simon Font. Jack Daniel Forbes. Tyler Joseph Garrigal. Corey James Gee.
Neil William Jens. Zachary Joseph Gerace. Tanner D. Haas. Brianna M. Hallis. Seth G. Hannum. Quinn P. Hickey. Madsen Nicole Hicks. Leah Ray Boisington. Jameson Michael Horch. Andrew Thomas Kennedy. Maximilian Kinkella. Max's diploma is being presented by his mother, current Board of Education Vice President, Christina Gegenschatz. Jenna May Lead. Taylor Jane Lamishko. Kareem Daquan Levens. <laughs> Lindsay Ann Lauder. <laughs> Diana Christina Ludwig. Diana's diploma is being presented by her grandfather, former Board of Education member, Andrew Christina. Connor Michael Linden. Trace Lawrence McKenzie. Richard Michael McCoyak, the third. Jarrett Timothy Maslach. <laughs> Elijah H. McKelvey. <laughs> Aurora Christine Merwin. <laughs> Johanna K. Myers. Maggie Nicole Magnoli. <laughs> Samantha Lorraine McCoola. Brandon Alexander Miles. Samantha E. Militello. Aurora J. Mills. <laughs> Nicholas Vincent Milson. <laughs> Phoenix Moore. <laughs> Carly Grace Morton. Grace Rihanna Mrachka. Braden Lee Myers. Owen Charles Nicosia.
Nicholas James Novelli. Elizabeth Margaret O'Connell. Courtney E. Orr. Osase William Osula. Aaron James Pecos. Bryson W. Pecos. Jessica V. Parker. Zachary T. Pasquale. Alexander Mason Payne. Raziel N. Pearl. Gabriel Bud Persh. Michael Robert Persh. Keith W. Piper. Keith's diploma is being presented by his mother, Amy Piper, Fredonia Elementary School principal. <laughs> Olivia P. Plaza. <laughs> Skylar S. Prentice. Nicholas Ronald Pucci. <laughs> Isabella Pucci Schaefer. <laughs> Mackenzie Quinn. <laughs> Alejandro Ramirez Wakefield. Kevin B. Redfield. Diego C. Ray. Caleb James Reynolds. Ashley Marie Ricker. Parker Roberts Rivera. <laughs> Finley Alexandra Rogerson. <laughs> James Rush the Fourth. Giovanni Joel Russo. <laughs> William Coulter Schmidt. Andrew J. Schrantz. Alexis Lynn Schroeder. Marcus A. Seastead. <laughs> Hannah Marie Saleri. <laughs> Nathan Allen Schuert.
Aaron R. Schuler. Zachary Hunter Skinner. Hannah Josephine Snyder. Thomas Jeffrey Strauser. Trey Xavier Schwartz. Audrey Sinclair Taylor. Tess M. Thompson. Yadielis Bain Vasquez. Brandon David Wallace. Ali Noel Walton Bald. Benjamin Robert Weiss. Alexis Marie White. Devin Wesley Weidenhofer. Ian Timothy Wright. Nicholas Joseph Yacklin. Kaylin Olivia Zabraski. Please join me in congratulating the graduating class of 2019. Okay, so my instructions here say, if students are sitting, I'm supposed to say, will the candidates please rise? The faculty and administration of the Fredonia Central School District have verified that you have successfully completed the prescribed course of study for the state of New York. Therefore, by the power vested in me by the state of New York and our Board of Education, I hereby award you with a graduation diploma. It's official. You can all sit down. <laughs> Members of the board, Superintendent Sorticio, Principal Paschke, Assistant Principal Parker, honored guests and fellow ga graduates, good afternoon and thank you all for coming to celebrate the class of 2019. I have been trying to come up with the perfect words to bid you all farewell into the next chapter of our lives. I then realized that it is so much simpler than that. 
always have a willing hand to help someone, you might be the only one that does. This is the quote we should live by as we embark on our next journey and throughout our lives. In our present world, where it is so easy to put others down, be the one person who lends a helping hand. If you take nothing from your four years at Fredonia High School, remember this. Always try to be the kind person in the room. Throughout the rest of our lives, we will encounter people who try to belittle us, put us down, or try to sabotage us. For me, the first thing I ever learned in school was to be kind. This was way back 13 years ago in kindergarten. Be kind. Being kind is preached so much in our society, but sometimes can be practiced so little. I am not saying that I have the keys to success, but kindness will take us a long way. It is just like the golden rule states, treat others the way that you want to be treated. I believe that we have a duty to make this world a little better by being kind to one another. For example, throughout our four years in high school, we have received pride notes from all of our high school teachers. The teachers that wrote us those pride notes took time out of their day to make us feel proud and to remind us all that the work we do doesn't go unnoticed. I don't know about all of you, but when I received a pride note, it inspired me in a way. It inspired me to work hard for these teachers because they really cared about us and went out of their way to be kind. So as this next chapter in our lives is, as this chapter in our lives is ending, I hope you all carry out the next chapter with kindness in your heart. And remember, your ability to treat others with kindness and respect cannot be taken away by anyone. Thank you and congratulations.